Thank you very much everybody for joining me. Today I am going to make lentil soup. Um, and because I'm self-isolating, because of this um, COVID-19 virus or coronavirus, whatever you might want to call it, wherever you are, uh, as many of you know, it is really, really hard to try and find things in the supermarkets. So I've had to go to the small local shops here to try and find something um, and make do with what I've actually got in the cupboards. So I'm making lentil soup because I know it'll last for a couple of days, maybe three days. So that makes me happy. So I've got food because the shelves are a are stock on the shelves are as scarce as hen's teeth. So here we go. And Yes, so sorry about that. I just had to check why the dogs were barking their heads off like crazy. Anyway, let's get um, started. To start off with. Here we go, folks. 20 seconds of hand sanitizing, washing. I, we can't even find hand sanitizer here at the moment. And 20 seconds. Always good to be on the safe side. So, because this is a variation, I, it's a lighter variation of my um, lentil soup that my mother used to make. Um, being German, uh, she used to make quite a really heavy, stodgy lentil soup, which was like, once it's set after it um, been in the fridge, um, you could cut it with a knife, it was that thick. So this is a variation, much lighter and quite nice. So what you need, spring onions, some, I've, oh, I've picked up the wrong one. That was supposed to be veggie stock. Because um, the guys are eating this, um, yeah, that's fine. I will eat something else. And as some of you know, I'm not adverse to eating meat. I just prefer not to eat it. So, yeah, there's some leeway. I'm not militant with it. Like, ow, oh, your meat touched mine and we can't cook it on the same hot plate, all that sort of stuff, rubbish. So I just choose not to eat it. It is my preference. So, tinned lentils, I found. Saves an um, awful lot of having to try and soak and cook um, the dry ones. There, there, it was easier. Uh, some, these rice noodles, gluten-free for the boy because he is um, gluten intolerant. And I got some bacon bones. The, the local butcher smokes themselves and it puts a really nice smoky flavor in to the soup. So here we go. First thing, all the bones. In. And as you saw, these were relatively cheap. What was it, about, about $3 for a whole tray. And because there's not much meat really on these, it looks a lot, but once it all um, pressure cooks down, all that sort of stuff, there's not a great deal of meat. It's nice to sort of pick um, the meat off them and suck if people are into sucking bones that's good that way all right so all that in and 
some water to start off with. Why am I not putting the stock in? Because if this is too salty, and I'll check it again, I'll check this in say an hour. If this is too salty, um, I have wasted all this chicken stock. So if it's too salty, I'll tip out some of the salty water and then top it up with this. So it's a lot fresher tasting. You're not getting a whole lot of um, salt from um, bacon bones. And like I said, it goes on the stove. As I'll turn that on while I'm waiting. Goes on the stove for an hour. Um, not too much water. As you can see, it's, I don't know, just half covering the bacon bones. You don't want to fill it right up because anybody knows pressure cookers that it will spit stuff everywhere. I actually did a video for you guys a couple of days ago on my plant-based meatloaf. And, okay, so this is on high to get the pressure. So many little gizzy um, it pops up, so I get the steam. Once it comes to pressure, I will turn this right down um, and just let it do its thing. If you leave it up, if you're not um, used to a pressure cooker, if you leave it up too high, it will just sort of really sort of um, burn probably inside and you've ended up with a mess because you can't open this up really. If you do, you're slowing cooking time down. But, so that's an hour, I'll turn it down, I'll come back. Uh, the noodles just need to soak in some hot water. That goes in when you're serving up. That goes in. These, because they're tinned and they're pre-softened, um, you don't need to put these in. If I was to use the dry ones, I'd probably put them in with the bacon bones probably now or in an hour or something when I open it up. I'd probably put it in once I check everything's okay. Um, oh, the dried ones. But these, once it's all cooked, all the meat's cooked because the meat obviously um, being um, bones and sort of dried out a bit they need time to cook so this goes in afterwards that as I um, said goes in once I check that it's not too salty the spring onions shallots whatever you call them um, in your part of the world that goes in once everything's been switched off um, so you keep that nice fresh um, shallot spring onion taste and it gives it a really nice flavor also oh I forgot your malt vinegar um, afterwards odd thing to use or your white wine vinegar um, I will put some of that in once I put in the chicken stock it cuts down um, sweet and sour, salty, um, sweet and sour, salty, um, salty, bitter, I forgot. So that counteracts the salt a bit and it gives it a, a really nice taste, trust me. Um, when I tried it on the guys here, they're going, oh, vinegar, oh, yuck, it's going to be horrible, I don't want to eat that, they love it, love it to death and they will eat um, copious amounts. Um, I might be lucky to get a couple of days or they could be that hungry that they'll eat all of it depending on how much I ended up making. So anyway, I'm rattling, I'm uh, carrying on too much. I will come back. I will pose myself. I will come back and check this in, say roughly an hour. I don't think you need me. I'll, I'll come back just to show you the process, only because if you haven't used a, a pressure cooker before, to show you what goes on, okay? So, I'll be back. Um, ba, ba, um, um, um. 
Okay, so this has come up to pressure. As you can see, it is doing its thing. I need to turn this on, the range hood to catch the steam. Once it comes on, just turn it right down. So there's still pressure, so there's a nice hiss. I'll walk away from it a bit. So there's a nice hiss coming out of there, but not so it's cooking madly. So turn that down. I've got it on a big um, uh, um, element there, so I can turn mine right down. So just check it if it stops hissing and goes down too far, you've turned it down too far, just adjust it and see how you go. All right, so that's where, where we're at. It's slowing down, it's got a nice gentle hiss and that should be okay. I'll just aim it under the range hood a little bit more and we'll be back once the process is done, once the hour is done. Okay, it's been an hour and we are right to check how it's going. Let's have a look in there without steaming up the camera. Looks all right. It's boiled out probably about half the liquid that I put in there, half the water. So I think I am okay. I'll just check that, I better check it. There you go on there, Ryder. What you doing, Ryder? What you doing, baby? I'll check this water. tip some out and it's got some serious salt going on I'll tip half of that out because I don't want to have to restock it again with water all right I could probably give these bones maybe another 10 minutes. But I will put what I want in there now. My stock, like I said, vegetable stock, stock preferably. But I picked up the wrong one. Um, Definitely salt reduced, if you can get salt reduced or no salt or whatever it is these days. And a bit of water. I might stick a bit more meat in there because they don't really like chewing on the bones. It's a bit hard for Dylan because he is mobility or motor skills. Uh, not the best for picking up bones and chewing on them. So what falls off the bone, I will probably get off the bone as much as possible. Um, I got bacon ends. I'll just chuck all of it in. We're gonna have a nice meaty dinner. Like I said, this is gonna last for a, a while. We'll get that nasty bit of fat out of there. And that can go to the dog. And I will put this back on for another 15 minutes, I think, because the bones haven't, um, you can tell because all the meat will start falling off the bone. And that's still clinging a little bit. So uh, you want it to fall off the bone because it's gonna make eating it easier. I'll give this to the puppies. Should have done this on the board. 
good, but anyway. All right, where are you, babies? Come on. Ralph. And cyclone. There you are. Come on, babies. Good boy. Good boy. What you got powder on you for? Sit down, cyclone. Good boy. You're a good man. There you go. That's it. Like I said, 15 minutes. I'll come back. That'll be ready to go. And final stages. And I'll go back over here so I know where I'm at for the next video. And I'll see you in 15 minutes. Okay, said 15 minutes. I will open that up in a sec. The rice noodles. I boiled my water. And it says to soak for about five minutes. But I'll probably halve that because they will end up in the soup and I don't want them to fall apart. It's one bad thing about rice noodles, they tend to fall apart easily. If you overcook them, gosh, that looks like a lot of meat. I will transfer this into a pot where I can see what's going on. They're all falling apart nicely, as you can see. Lovely. Happy about that. Doesn't look quite so meat lovers now. of this off camera so boring the day daylights out of here okay back again I've taken the meat off these bones the dogs are going to be very happy they're going to love me forever so it's all in here now all the and it's all cooked down quite nicely you might find one or two bones still in it but nothing to be concerned about this needs more water, so I will put more water in it. It's the easiest way, I guess. All right. Back on the heat, turn it up to full. There you go, now that's starting to look like soup. Doesn't look quite nearly as scary. Nice meaty if you enjoy pork, especially when it's been smoked. While I was away, I've 
drain these, open up the cans, drain these under just some cold water and they're right to go in. The uh, rice noodles also I've drained and rinsed them right down to so they're cold. So I don't want them to cook anymore because once they're in the soup they will cook again. And I also found out that if you cook pasta, and yes, there's um, different ways of doing it, especially if you're eating it straight away, like um, pasta, uh, Italian pasta or something, uh, straight out of um, the hot water that you've um, boiled it in and straight into what you're cooking in the sauce that you're cooking it in. But if you cook your pasta and cool it right down to like cold and then introduce it back into heat right at the last minute apparently it acts like a fiber in your gut and helps um far more with your digestion i only just learnt that um the other day so off um a chef i was watching which was interesting to know and i always i tend to like my pasta to stay firm so here you go now it is looking even more like um, lentil soup what the end product should be looking like this will cook for bring it back to the boil cook it um, like just for a couple of minutes because the lentils are soft remember and turn it off it's done poop that is done so once it's done, I'll put some of this vinegar in because talking too much, I've forgotten. That looks like an awful lot of vinegar, but trust me, it's not. Um, you have to try it to know um, what I mean. It's definitely not too much vinegar. So all these spring onions, shallots, whatever you call it, like I said, whatever it is in your um, city, just chop it up, slice it up, reasonably fine-ish. Uh, so it's just nice. And once you've turned the soup off, okay, once you've turned it off, then these go in there. And just let it sit. Let it cool for, cool for a bit because this is one of those soups that tastes better as it's allowed to sit. Okay. Oh, and I was um, telling the story. I, I did a video a couple of days ago. I got sidetracked with something. I did a video, told you a little bit earlier on, um, of my meatloaf. But I when I was finished processing it and getting it all ready and I was all ready the other day to load it up and I thought beautiful yes it's all come together nicely lovely I don't know where my mind was uh, I deleted half the video stuff like the fully done processed video I deleted that completely and all these um, little GoPro videos, um, raw videos off of the GoPro, I deleted one import because it tends to um, separate into like, I think 11 mi uh, minutes sections. So I deleted one of those important 11 minute sections right th that was right in the middle of the video. So I couldn't redo another one. So without a huge piece missing. So that's ready to go. Put your vinegar in and like i said let it come to the boil and it's a nice hearty definitely a nice hearty soup for winter i'm going to pretend that this is boiled and i'm going to um, grab you out some so you can see the finished product this in there I'm just moving this ahead guys only because to 
for video reasons but like i said let it boil with the um, lentils in just so it all sort of um, blends in together for a couple of minutes then turn it off and you'll be right to go but this is pretty much right to go so i'll leave it there you can either put your noodles in once it's cooled right down or you can just do like a bit in your bowl and once you've got the pasta it sort of evens everything out that you think oh god I'm gonna die from meat uh, um, overload of meat but you're not some stuff to make it look pretty and there you have it there you have my reworked traditional lentil um, German lentil soup that my mother used to make like I said mum's used to be like just a th almost a thick globby paste this as you can see is far lighter the pasta lightens it all up it's all and once you di um, disperse it with the pasta it lightens everything up and it's not nearly as heavy as what you'd think so there you go there's my traditional um, self-isolation lentil soup um, to combat this um, covid virus sorry i'm playing with this and uh, not paying attention and there you go i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you um to see you next time give me a thumbs up let you know, let me know what you think and uh enjoy that's all i have to say and i'll see you at the next one thank you very much for watching and don't forget to wash your hands bye Ooh, do, 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 do. I'm spewing that I deleted that video. I tell ya, I'm spewing. But here you go. Here's your new one. Ooh, ba, ba, ba. Do, 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 do. How do I turn it off? Where is it? Hang on. Oh,